Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Last summer, I made a video about the Solar Plane V4 flying for eight and a half hours straight. And in that video, I talked about how I think there might be two viable approaches to solar plane design. The first is the more traditional approach of starting with a highly efficient airframe, like a glider, and then adding solar cells to the wing. The second approach was to make a fatter, less efficient wing, but one that could hold more solar cells. The excess power from those additional solar cells would overcome the inefficiencies from the fatter wing. The Solar Plane V4 was a pretty good example of the second approach. It's definitely more of a park flyer type aircraft than a high efficiency glider, and for its size, it holds quite a few solar cells. With these concepts in mind, we can think about solar planes as a spectrum. On the left, we have aerodynamically efficient designs. And then on the right, we have maximum solar surface area designs. I'd say the Solar Plane V4 is about right here, and the Solar Plane V3 was about here. I'd never seen anyone build anything that's over here, so I figured I'd give it a shot. To really push the concept to the extreme, I decided to make a big rectangular wing, kind of like a pizza box flyer. People have been building these forever, and they generally aren't the best flying aircraft, but oh boy do they have a lot of wing area, ripe for solar cells. For my build, I used half-inch insulation foam with a single carbon spar and the leading edge. In hindsight, this was probably not enough to stiffen the wing. I added a KF airfoil step at the front, or something to nestle the solar cells behind so they don't create as much drag. Looking back, I probably should have just taped over the leading edge of the solar cells and gone without the KF step. The rest of the build was pretty simple. I beveled the leading edge and added big elevons in the back, and a little Omnibus F4 flight controller running ArduPilot with a Dragonlink Nano receiver for RC control and a telemetry downlink. I decided to use the motor for my crashed eSky Albatross, and I had to mount it out further forward than the leading edge to help get the CG as far forward as possible. Before adding solar cells, I took it out for the maiden flight and to spend some time tuning the flight controller. This thing is great. It just floats. Probably just because it's so light. Whoop. <laughs> this time I'm gonna try putting it in return to home mode and see if it'll fly autonomously. Okay, I'm gonna flip the switch. Oh, that's bad. I'm in manual, why isn't it flipping over? There we go. Oh! oh. I put it into return to home mode. It built up too much airspeed and then immediately flipped over. This thing has to be flown slowly. Still works. Okay, so I turned down the cruise throttle a lot from like 45 to 30%. Cruise airspeed, I'm gonna put that at 7.5 meters per second. It's like a flying carpet. Okay, let's try this again. Go. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, I might not have gotten as lucky this time. It looks like the ground is not as soft over here. Motor's a little bit dirty. Huh, still looks pretty fine. I think this thing might just be too floppy. So today I've got some vertical pieces of foam on the bottom. This is the bottom of the plane, by the way. This is the top. Um, and the idea there is that it's now really stiff on the pitch axis. I'm hoping these don't act as like a diffuser and create a low pressure area on the bottom of the plane. Um, it's likely that that could happen, but hopefully it doesn't. They're an inch tall in the front and two inches tall in the back, so hopefully that gives it a bit more uh, yaw stability too. Okay, let's give this a shot. That's just hands off in fly-by-wire A mode. Look at that. Just floats. It flies really well if you just keep it slow. I'm gonna take it up higher and put it in return to home mode and see what happens. Whew! Now it's flying itself. Hasn't nosedived yet. It's doing it! <laughs> Look at that. So majestic. After that, I spent a few more days tweaking and tuning settings until eventually it was flying really well in return to home mode. At that point, I decided it was time to add solar cells. I decided to use these big 380 by 140 millimeter solar cells from a company called Solar Rear or something like that. They're pretty lightweight and flexible, and they're supposed to be only slightly less efficient than the sun power cells that I've used before. 
To give you an idea of how flexible they really are, I break an already damaged cell here. So, oh, wow. They can bend quite a bit before cracking. Here's a good cell, you can see how much they bend. I soldered all these together and used a dab of silicone glue under each cell to hold them down. The silicone glue is easy to cut so that the cells can be quickly removed if needed. So now we've got some direct sun and we're doing about 3 amps, which is awesome. I'm using two little 5 amp MPPT controllers that turned out to not work very well for me. One for each side of the wing. So it's high noon right now. The sun is pretty low in the sky because it's late in the year. The days are short, the nights are long. Not great weather for solar plane flying, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways because, well, it's all we can do. I've got this little LED display current meter here in between the solar cells and the battery. And when I hold the plane up facing directly into the sun, it does about 3.8 amps. So whether or not that's enough to sustain flight, I'm not sure yet because I don't have a current meter on this plane, unfortunately. But uh, I'll take it up, fly around, and we'll watch the battery voltage throughout the flight and see if it's uh, staying the same or going down. And that'll indicate how the plane does as far as solar power production and whether or not it has the ability to sustain flight on solar power alone. So adding the solar cells to the wing really throws off the center of gravity because the center of gravity is like about right here and the majority of the solar cells are aft of the center of gravity. So to compensate for that, I've had to uh, Velcro another battery on top of the flight battery just to add extra weight. This battery is not even gonna be plugged in. So that's unfortunate. That's gonna reduce the efficiency of the airplane a lot, but there's no other way to get it to fly. So, oh well. Wow, this thing feels so much heavier than it did before. I don't even know if it's gonna fly. Oh yeah, it flies. Definitely flies faster now. It also needs more throttle to stay up, which that's not great for the sake of sustaining flight, but I guess that's what we expect when we add a bunch of weight and an extra battery. So now the question is, how much power is it consuming? Okay, now it's in return to home mode. It should just orbit the home position here. Extra battery, center of gravity, flying so slowly. Efficiency is crap. It's a pizza box harvesting electrons flying through the atmosphere. It's the dump truck of the solar plane world. Now a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Having a wide range of skills is crucial for projects like this one. It involves design, fabrication, prototyping, engineering, videography, and more. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next steps in their creative journey with thousands of awesome classes for creative and curious people on a whole range of topics, including illustration, design, photography, video, entrepreneurship, and more. One of my favorites is this class on outdoor photography by Chris Burkard. He has a lot of awesome tips for everything from composition to post-processing. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable at only $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We're in a contrail shadow right now. It's reducing our power. We're down to 13.9 volts, so this could end it. Okay, my battery's getting pretty low now, so I'm gonna bring it into land. And that's it. So that flight was just shy of an hour and 30 minutes. Um, which actually isn't too bad considering the circumstances. We had some wispy clouds blocking the sun quite a bit at one point. I started off just flying in return to home mode and I was getting some, some huge uh, altitude variants and then I realized that was probably from um, incorrect altitude reading. As I was watching Mission Planner, watching the altitude on Mission Planner, it was going like negative and then positive. It was just all over the place. 
So uh, maybe like the barometer is getting some weird airflow over it and I need to put some foam over that or I don't know what could be wrong. But And then also these fins, like as you can see right now, there's shadow on the solar cells and that's really bad. So I should probably just cut those off or put them down at a, a more shallow angle, kind of like a V-tail. So uh, I think this plane has potential. Also, I like this battery was not being used at all. It's just the battery that's under it that was being used. So uh, if I would have actually connected both of these batteries and started out with them both fully charged, I could have totally flown for a lot longer. Um, but that wasn't the point. The point was to see if the solar cells would provide enough power for a long duration flight alone, not including the, the battery capacity on board. And uh, it definitely seemed like they were doing something because an hour and 30 minutes for a rectangular plane is pretty impressive. So during the six months after that flight, I had the plane in my garage. And not once, but two times, I had bicycles dropped on top of it. So I had to repair one of the solar cells and the vertical stabilizers broke off and I forgot about them. That brings us to early May, where I set out to see if this plane can sustain flight on solar power alone. At first, it seemed to fly okay, but then I tried putting it in return to home mode and things went south pretty quickly. Wow, thing flies really bad. <laughs> It just went upside down for a second. I can hardly even tell which way it's going. One of the reasons it was so uncontrollable was that I forgot how much weight I needed on the front to get the CG right. I ended up just using a little 1300 milliamp hour 4S and that was not enough weight. It just keeps flipping over. This is not so good. <laughs> I don't know, I think it might be a goner. The flight controller was unable to steer the plane in the right direction. Amazingly, it was able to keep it up in the sky, and it was actually pretty good at roughly maintaining the target altitude set point. I could even change it through Mission Planner, and the plane would climb or descend to the new commanded altitude. Yep, it's just flying away. Now it's just like seed potting. At this point, the plane was kind of like a hot air balloon. I had very little control over the direction, but I could choose where to land based on altitude control. Once it was over what looked like a safe spot, I disarmed and let it flutter to the ground. Yeah, it's just going down. Shoot, well, I guess I gotta put it in manual mode, drop the throttle, and try and disarm it. Ugh, that sucks. Guess I'm going on an adventure. Where, oh where has that solar plane gone? Picking up telemetry signal so it's still powered on. From the telemetry data, it looked like the plane had landed in a wooded area in between some houses and a horse barn. I decided to approach it from the neighborhood side, and luckily I found a nice lady who let me go through her backyard. I mean, you can walk down in my ravine if you want, but there's a pathway that's better than this. Okay. You want to go down? So yeah. You want to go in maybe the I'll try that. Um, yeah. And I can I can wiggle the controls, so maybe I can hear it. Oh wait, I I think I heard it. Yeah. It's somewhere over there. Okay, I'm getting close. When I raise the throttle, I can hear it. Listen. Yeah, it's just over here. Oh, I see electronics. I think, maybe, there's something on the ground. Oh, baby, baby. That's it. Mission accomplished. I thought that was the electronics right there, but it's just a soda can. That's the solar plane and it fell through this dense canopy. It looks like it's in good shape too. That's hilarious. Well, thanks for your help. I found it. Sorry about that. It's like something you want to lose. It's really just a big chunk of foam, <laughs> but yeah, it's got some stuff on it that's kind of expensive, so yeah. glad to find it. It looks like you put a lot of work into it. So. <laughs> yeah, I did put a lot of work into it. Yeah. I'm glad you found it. It's oh. like up in one of the big trees. I'm, I got, honestly, I'm so lucky that it's not in a big tree because <laughs> it. would be like, hmm, yeah. Where am I the eagle? <laughs> yeah, you go up and get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm glad oh, you found it. I got it. lucky. Yeah, thanks for your help. You're welcome. Have a good one. That was a close call. Got it back. Still have never lost a plane in my life. <laughs> I don't know how. It's, I don't know how that's possible. So obviously I didn't get much good data from that last flight. So today I'm just going to plug a battery into it while it's sitting on the ground and see how many amps I can charge a battery at. And then I'm going to try and just fly um, and maintain altitude across the field. Just a mellow, easy flight. 
and see what level my throttle's at and then measure the current draw at that same amount of throttle. Just so that we can kind of get an idea of whether or not this plane can maintain altitude with solar alone. All I'm trying to do is maintain altitude. I'm not trying to control it. If it crashes on the other side of the field, I'm fine with that. Oh Jesus, now it's flying away. Okay, we might be maintaining altitude right now. So check the current PWM value. Okay, I'm gonna try and bring it in now. Wow, it works today. Barely, <laughs> it just barely turns. Okay, so I'm going to set the throttle to 1396 PWM. There it is, that's 1396. And we'll come over here and look at this little current meter that I've plugged in. It's doing about 4.35 amps. And it's probably a little, a little less when it's moving forward and there's more airflow on the propeller. So probably like 4.3, 4.2 amps. Now I'll flip the current meter around to see how much power the solar cells can put into the battery. This is doing 3.6 amps, so it would not be able to sustain flight on solar power alone. I'm sure with different solar cells, and if I just did a better job at building this, it probably would have been able to maintain flight on solar power alone. But this one, not so much. I think the biggest problem with this plane, aerodynamically speaking, is just that it's too floppy. It just kind of conforms to the air and doesn't really just cut through it like it should. It was at this point that I realized the entire test was banking on these cheap little MPPT controllers working well, and I didn't really have any proof that they do. For that reason, I decided to do a direct comparison to an MPPT that I had more confidence in. So now I've got both the panels not connected to these two little MPPT boards, but instead they're going into the GV uh, Genesun charge controller here. And then let's look at the current. We are doing 5.5 amps, 5.4 amps. So that's a lot more. So these controllers suck, or they're not tuned properly or something, I'm not sure. But uh, that's a lot more power than this thing needs to fly. Unfortunately, it doesn't really fly. <laughs> so there's not really much I can do with it, but that's cool to see that um, these solar cells are able to generate enough current to stay in the air. I just have this light here connected as a load to keep the battery from charging too fast or filling up. Damn, I wish this plane flew because then I would switch charge controllers and fly to the moon. Maybe I'll have to revisit this concept someday and build another park flyer solar plane because I think with the other sun power solar cells that are kind of the industry standard and a better charge controller like this one, this pizza box solar plane concept would really work well. I'm not saying it would work well for staying in the air for the longest possible amount of time. Like you, you would obviously need a high efficiency glider to survive the night on battery power to wait till the sun comes up the next day. But if your goal is just to like gain a lot of altitude while the sun's out or something like that, I think this concept could really work well. So the whole point of building this is to explore the envelope of solar planes and see what works and what doesn't. And I hit the far edge of the envelope with this super slow park flyer type design. So next I want to try and build a super efficient large wingspan glider um, and put solar cells on that. And I want to do that one well. I want to do it right. Um, I'll probably try and make the wing out of carbon fiber. Um, lay everything up. I want to try and even mold the solar cells into the wing. So that's going to be a big project. I haven't even really started on it yet. I need to start thinking about making molds and all that sort of thing. So there's going to be a big learning curve there because I haven't done that sort of thing before, but it should be fun. It should be interesting. Woo, catching some wind. Woo! So anyways, that's all for this video. Hope you learned something. I sure did. Thanks for watching. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video of the latest solar plane experiment. That amazing song was created by the one and only Truck Daddy Beats, AKA Colin Fox here. Colin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your workflow? I have GarageBand on this iPhone and that's it. The amazing part is that Colin records all these songs while he's on his lunch break at his day job, which happens to be a truck mechanic. Thus the name Truck Daddy Beats. Now, Colin would love to move up in the world of music and go from producing on an iPhone to a laptop. But laptops are very expensive, so Colin's doing a GoFundMe to get him a laptop so that he can make higher quality music for RC test flight songs and other purposes. And other, and other what? Watching um, porn. <laughs>
So if you've enjoyed Colin's music, check out the link in the description for his GoFundMe. Maybe throw him a few bucks to help get a sweet laptop so that he can make better quality songs. Colin, any closing remarks? God bless you. Ha <laughs> ha